In the last two weeks, a lot has happened in the mobile internet space, which is like a huge bonus for us that are, well, in RVs and or boats, and the summer's right upon us, which means we don't have to worry about using hotspots on our phone or hotspots that are dropping out. Hopefully we have a lot more options to make connectivity a lot easier, especially if you have to sneak into a meeting, you know, when you're on the road, all those types of things that we covered in our working remotely video. Number one is, it's Starlink, but now it's for RVs. That's right, it's mobile. Take it anywhere. They don't get upset with you. Uh, you can pause it. We'll talk more about all the cool things about it and the downsides. But Carlin found something this week that just, it was like a week before that launched. That's a great option too. Yeah, so now we have the T-Mobile 5G mobile internet. Anywhere, all the time, it's not just home anymore. That's right. This thing just used to be for home, and they said if you used it somewhere else or took it somewhere else, they deactivated it, and they just redid the terms on it. Mm -hmm. and now you can take it anywhere. So, right, let's get to it. Talk about the cool things about both, the things that are kind of a detractor about each of them as well, and which one might be best, or, I don't know, maybe we could make a, like a, a Frankenstein out of two of them. Marry them. Yes, and it might even be better, but we'll talk about that later. All right, welcome on board. Don't forget to subscribe. And for everyone who's new, nice seeing you. Join us on the Elliot as we realize our five-year plan with the kids. Grown up, moved out, graduated from college. We take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to start with is the Starlink for RV. Now look, if you had a Starlink, they had a mobility option that they made available. It was like $30 on top of your service. That's super cool, but we live in the middle of Seattle. There's no way we're going to have Starlink. I've been on a wait list forever, and because we're in a location that has great coverage with fiber and everything else, there's no way we're going to get that. And quite frankly, we shouldn't get it. Nobody understands that we're gonna be on a boat, we're gonna be in Canada and somewhere else. They think we live in Seattle. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I was waiting, hoping that we might get something and be able to do mobility. This launched on the 25th of May. I ordered it on the 26th of May and it showed up on the 30th. I mean, that's a big deal, right? You don't have to be on a wait list. You can just get this bad boy now. Now. I'm going to go through all the great parts about this thing. Uh, let me see. We talked about no wait list. The other one is you can pause it. So if you have an RV or a boat, you need to get away, and you need to be able to have uh, coverage from the internet, it's sweet. Go ahead and use it. And then you pause it when you're not using it. That's kind of a big deal. That is um, unlimited data. And, you know, we were talking to some friends. They use hotspots, or they use their phones, and they get up to X amount of usage, and then you get cut off or you mm -hmm. get throttled, yep. and it doesn't work. You can't do anything. Right, especially if you're off. trying to work remotely, you know, being in the middle of a meeting and losing your SIM card, that's just not gonna work. It has Canadian coverage is another one. That's gonna be huge because I'm so looking forward to going to Canada. Yeah, finally they open up the borders. Yay! Can't wait to see our friends. We're going up to Desolation Sound, and the coverage for cell is down near zero up there. Uh, so this is really going to open a lot of horizons for us, no pun intended. What's the next one? Uh, oh, okay, the speed. It's 100 meg plus download. We've seen 150 just sitting here in Seattle, and we've seen upload eh, about 16, 17. That's about what you're going to get out of a cell hotspot. Now, you might go, that's not that great. And this is where we get into the downsides. The reason it's not that great in Seattle is because it's a best effort service. So when you have a permanent location with a Starlink, you have priority. That's cool, that kind of makes sense. You know, us yokels that are running around in people's backyards up in Canada, we should probably be second priority. And that's kind of the way this thing is set up. Uh, so being able to have 100 plus down and 17 up, I've seen a lot of people that have achieved double that. But they have a static location for this. That's one of the downsides, you are deprioritized with this particular solution. Now, uh, let me see, what are some of the other downsides? Trees, you get a tree or another obstacle in front of this thing, and well, it just doesn't work. 
it'll hunt around, but it's an issue whether you have an RV and you're in a campground or if you're in a tight anchorage and there are trees next to you. The other one is this is not built for a marine application yet. Those folks at Starlink are smart. Sure, they're working at it. The market's way smaller for the boating community right now than it is for the RV community. This is the same dish. They don't have to invest a lot in it. I totally get why they prioritize this. We're probably gonna be putting this on our bow. We've already used it out back uh, on our dinghy davit area. Yeah, we tested it out and it worked awesome. Uh, it lined up within probably 10 minutes. It was able to find all of the satellites and it was working like a champ. By the way, I'm gonna drop a link into a video for MV Freedom. They did a mod on one of these uh, where they cut the back off of it to get rid of the motor and mounted it up on their hard top. It's, it's, crazy. A, it's crazy and it's awesome. So you, you gotta check it out because they're definitely cutting edge, no pun intended. We'll probably just be using this on our bow and on the back throughout the summer until we really get our sweet spot and then we'll think about maybe doing a mod to this and see if Starlink comes out with something that's specific to boats as well. What else? Let's go through this. Oh, it's $135 a month. Uh, if you already have Starlink, you probably go, oh, that's that's 25 bucks more a, a month. It is. Meh, there you go. Uh, the equipment, downsize, after shipping, $649. So it's not cheap, worth it. Cheaper than a lot of solutions back in the day when we talked about satellite mm -hmm. equipment. So it's not that bad. The router's pretty sweet. It, uh, it has one plug-in for the dish. It actually... Almost looks like this thing could be IP67. They don't advertise it that way, but it has really good uh, water resistance with the plugins. It has an electrical plug-in as well, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You have an app on your phone, and it connects to this, and it does all the rest. It's really elegant. We had this thing up and running in what five minutes yeah. as far as setup. That's it. it didn't was, take long at all. It was silly, fast, and easy. So the implementation is really fast with this. We're really impressed. Can't wait for the marine implementation, but excited to use this this summer. The only other thing on this one, it oh, it's it has Wi-Fi 5. That's not that bad, but Wi-Fi 6, especially for emerging appliances that have Wi-Fi 6, the connection is a lot stronger. It's not bad, but it's not using the latest technology, which is a little bit of a bummer. Really the last thing that's kind of a downside is this does have dropouts and it's self-admitted. It'll have dropouts sometimes as long as 12 seconds. It's not that big of a deal if you're just streaming video, but if you're trying to do Teams meetings, Zoom, Chime, those types of things, uh, they can't survive that kind of an interruption. Let's talk about the T-Mobile hotspot and what the upsides and downsides are so we can cut to the chase and talk about which one's better. We got the T-Mobile internet, 5G, anywhere. So this has actually been tried and true pretty well, kind of like the Starlink because they've used it for quite some time. And for some cool reason in the past two weeks, they decided you can take this mobile. And first of all, look at the size of it. Eh, you just plug it into the freaking wall and off you go. Um, if you look at the back of it, it has two ethernet connections as well. That's a real upside. You can actually plug two things into it or you can plug one into a switch so you can have additional uh, connections as well. If you're not into all that stuff, don't worry about it. You can just basically plug your computer into it if you want. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You just connect to it via Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi mm -hmm. six. six. Yeah. So. With new uh, devices that are coming out, like we have an iPhone 13, it's Wi-Fi 6. It's just gonna have a stronger connection, faster uploads. It's just better as far as that goes. Here's something that I love. It's unlimited. You heard me, it's unlimited. Unlimited. They will throttle you based upon service, but if the service exists, it is unlimited. Whereas, you know, a lot of hotspots, etc., they have limits. This doesn't, that's pretty sweet cost. The other part that's awesome about this is, how much is it a month? It's only $50 a month. And the equipment cost zero. Yeah. Now it's their equipment, so when you're done with it, you have to bring it back, but $649 and zero. Which yeah. one do you like better? Yeah, and 50 bucks a month and $135 a month. Can you pause this? No. Can you pause this? Yes. It kind of depends upon your scenario, but there you go. Uh, speed. We've already seen download speeds in excess of 200 meg. That's 
almost 100% more than what we're seeing on the Starlink. Again, where best effort was Starlink, this is not best effort. Uh, this is turning out pretty well. The, the uh, upload speeds have been like 50, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing because this one is sitting more at 17, which is kind of what you see on a cell phone, like a really good cell phone. This is amazing as far as the upload speeds. If you're doing anything that has large file uploads, like, I don't know, you have a YouTube channel. Right. That so now you're going to see more of us because I can upload videos with this. That's right. Yeah. All right. And I don't know if that's an upside. Maybe that should be in the minus or the plus or you, you figure that part out. Trees, no problem. You don't have to worry about it. You literally just set it down, plug it in, off it goes. Uh, however, that brings us to some of the downsides. It doesn't have any antennas. Uh, it is MIMO. What the hell is that? It's multiple in, multiple out antennas. And it's a MIMO too, so it has two antennas going in and two antennas going out to be able to do upload and download. That's pretty cool, but you can't plug anything else into it. So you literally have to go put it somewhere that is next to a window. Uh, if you're moving around, especially on an anchor, uh, you know, if yeah. you're swinging, you could have obstructions. It, it could be an to issue. Be in the closest place to the next T-Mobile tower. Right. Wherever that is. Yeah. So whether it's an upside or a downside, if it had antennas uh, that we could connect to the boat and have you know greater height and visibility, that would be pretty sweet. But it just doesn't. Two last things. It obviously needs cell phone coverage from T-Mobile. So if you start getting into the boonies, you may not have that. The other thing, it doesn't go to Canada. Now for those of you that aren't going to Canada or Mexico this year, it doesn't really matter. I get it. But for us, it's absolutely critical. There's a lot of people up here in the Northwest who are dying to get up to Canada. It doesn't matter what the fuel prices are. We're going to do it. Love Canada. That's right. We're going. Yeah. So can't wait to see all our viewers and friends up there uh, as we bounce into Canada in July. Now let's cut to the chase. Which one is better? Well, it kind of depends or an area that has cell phone coverage, like the San Juan Islands, <laughs> you'll love this. The CEO of T-Mobile has a place up in the San Juan Islands. There's no reason there should be 5G coverage up there, mm -hmm. except for the CEO is up there. So he has them everywhere. So when you go up there, this thing gets amazing coverage, right? Bonus. Uh, yeah, however, if we go bounce into Canada, this thing is useless. This thing's gonna save our banking. It's just gonna be one of those things. I think it's trade-offs. Why do we have both? Well, because we're gonna test them out. We'll give you more feedback on all of these things to help out if you're still on the fence about doing it. But hopefully some of these trade-offs as you're doing research, if you're diving in this year, uh, to be able to you know leverage one of these solutions to be able to stay connected. So maybe you can stay out a little bit longer, get a little bit of work done. Work you know, remotely. That's right. And nobody can tell the difference because you have flawless connections. and. Let's pause with that. The reality is both of these have downsides. Both of these can drop out. Both of these can leave you stranded based on location, based upon coverage, based upon trees, you name it. So I don't even know if it's really a question of which one is better. Wouldn't it be awesome, like we talked about in the beginning of this. Merging them yeah. somehow together. Right, in that way, when you have trees, but you have cell coverage, this thing works. You don't have to switch between the two of them. Maybe both of them are working and having a hundred meg and a hundred meg download mm -hmm. and it combines both of them and you're able to get 200 meg. What? Or if this one hiccups for 12 seconds and this one's going strong, you have both of them behind you and they're connected and bonded so that the hiccup, you never see it. All right. So this is where this comes in. It's a Peplink Wi-Fi router that depends on cellular. It has two slots in it with two modems that balances between each of them. And it's able to merge both of these either via WAN connection, via ethernet, or just Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi 6 will be a lot stronger with this. It's going to be able to combine all of them. It'll smooth the WAN connection. It'll make sure you don't have dropouts. And it does all of that seamlessly. So I'd open this up and show you all about it. But that's for our next video. Till next time. Have a great week. Peace.